Hey, good morning everyone. It's July 2nd, 2022. And did you see what that bridge we just passed under said? It said Blue Mountain and Redding. Or actually, it might have said Redding and Blue Mountain. I always forget the order. That's the prior name of... It's too early, guys. I haven't had my coffee. That's the prior name for Redding and Northern. Uh, Reading Blue Mountain and Northern Railroad. Yes, I know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> today, I am chasing the second of the Iron Horse Rambles. That is the passenger excursion from Reading to Jim Thorpe, led by the beautifully restored 484 steam locomotive number 2102. She's, of course, the star of the show. And here we go. We got another one of these bridges coming up. I haven't had my coffee yet, guys. I'm not responsible for anything I say yet. Blue Mountain and Redding. Uh, that was the original name of the railroad, and now it's uh, Redding, Blue Mountain, and Northern, which we'll just shorten to Redding and Northern. Anyway, the game plan for today, I've got uh, five locations, possibly six, picked out to film 2102. Uh, they are not going to be the same locations as my prior chase. Uh, however, today's weather is questionable, uh, particularly in the afternoon, so I think the morning plans are a little more firm. I'm going to be starting my day in Leesport, uh, then going to Molino. Those are both new-to-me locations that I have not filmed at yet. And then if all goes well, I'm going to make my way into Jim Thorpe, and my plan for that is to park in Lehigh Gorge State Park, and then take my bicycle in, because getting parking in town on a holiday weekend is pretty close to impossible. And there's another good reason I want to go to Jim Thorpe today, and that's I have heard they are using the diesel F units to pull the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway trains this weekend. And that's something, to my knowledge, that they have not done yet. And that's something I've been wanting to see. Uh, we also have cooler temperatures. It should stay in the high 70s um, with some cloud cover, which will keep things, I say comfortable, but the humidity's up, which is never fun. But I think it'll be tolerable for biking. And then the afternoon plans, it's, you know, hopefully everything's going to go okay with the weather. Um, I'd like to stick around to see it leave Jim Thorpe. I'd like to catch it again coming around the bend in South Tamaqua. And I may give up the chase there, or I may continue on to one of two locations in Hamburg that I have not filmed from yet. Again, it's all going to depend on the weather, it's all going to depend on my energy level, and if there's one thing I've learned about rail fanning is you've got to be flexible with your plans. So everything I just told you now is, of course, subject to change. I am doing this solo today. As far as I know, all of my YouTube friends have um, what we'll call more normal holiday weekend plans. I do wish they were here, though. I do like rail fanning with other people. That is fun, but I also have no problem going out on my own. And before we do any chasing, I am going to turn around here and go to the McDonald's, get myself some breakfast, and more importantly, some coffee, and then maybe I can talk more intelligently. So hang on for the ride, guys. Hopefully we're in for a really fun day of chasing and catching 2102 on the second Iron Horse Ramble of 2022. Yeah, Alright, so I've had my breakfast. I'm still working on the coffee. Hopefully that'll be helping matters soon. And I'm pulling into Leesport. And this first set of tracks is not the set of tracks that 2102 is going to run on. Oh, interestingly, as I got out of my truck in the McDonald's parking lot, I heard 2102's whistle. Uh, they were moving her down from Port Clinton down to Redding. <clears throat> and um, as a note for future trips, she passes through here right around 8 o'clock. Uh, had I been a little bit sooner, and had I known that, I could have filmed her already. But that's okay. We've still got a long year of chasing ahead. So I'm pulling into Leesport. That first set of tracks, yeah, I'm all over the place today, right guys? 
The first set of tracks actually goes from Reading to the Reading uh, Railroad uh, Heritage Museum up in Hamburg. That's the track that would go to the museum. And we were just up at the museum on Sunday, and uh, I know you haven't seen that video yet. It's actually going to be a three-part video. Um, I edited the first two parts yesterday. <coughs> You'll see those. Actually, you're going to see, I forget where they are in the schedule, but they're behind 2102. I think you'll see them immediately after 2102 and, of course, the 4th of July fireworks. Now, this second set of tracks, this is the one we care about. This is uh, Reading and Northern's main line that runs from Reading up to Port Clinton. And um, somewhere along here is where we're going to be filming her for our first stop of the day. <clears throat> and uh, it's looking good. I was kind of warned it could be crowded, but... Um, I see plenty of parking, so let's get ourselves a spot. So it's 9 o'clock and our train should be pulling out of Reading right about now. And I am in Leesport, Pennsylvania, just giving you a look at the ambiance here as this parking lot starts to fill up. And the train will be coming from this direction. I'll be running two cameras. I've got this handheld one and then I got the uh, Osmo action camera magnetized to the truck roof. Hopefully, uh, even if this parking lot fills up, that'll be enough to see over everybody's head. And I'm probably going to wander down closer to the crossing. <laughs> nice family over there. Whole family's out rail fanning together. Nice thing about this spot here, guys, is you've got uh, all this parking on the street, even if this lot fills up. You could keep going quite a ways down there and still get a spot. All right, let's get ready. guys everything's starting off well I got hopefully two very good shots from Leesport lots of uh, friendly rail fans out here lots of parents even grandparents out with the kids which is great to see it's a great uh, family activity and I love seeing the young kids get excited about the trains like I did when I was their age Oh heck, guys, you know me. I turn into a five-year-old every time I see one of these things. Maybe I found the fountain of youth? I don't know. How's about we drive up the road to Molino and test that theory? Let's see if we found the fountain of youth by rail fanning. See you there, guys. All right, so we're out on 61 heading north towards Hamburg and ultimately Molino, which I hope is my next stop. And uh, I just wanted to take a minute to give you guys my strategy, both for presenting the videos and for this year overall. As you've probably seen, I've been uh, posting the videos two different ways. Uh, as soon as humanly possible, when I get home and get the footage transferred, I put together the individual spots that I filmed it. Because some people, let's face it, that's really all they want to see is the train going by, they don't want to hear me yak. I appreciate those of you who do, but a lot of people don't. And I also want to be able, this is a hot topic in railroading, I want to be able to get those individual crossing videos out as soon as I can, as quickly as I can. 
So you'll see those first, and then you'll see them all compiled into what I've been calling the chase videos, which is this vlog style format that I'm doing now. Because I want to show you not just the train itself, but the adventure behind chasing it. There is a lot of planning, a lot of driving, and a lot of waiting that goes to get you these shots. Um, I enjoy the whole process. I certainly, of course, enjoy the train going through most of all. That's what I'm here for. <clears throat> but this is an adventure today, guys. I mean, I've told you my plan. Things may go according to plan. Things may not. Uh, things may go wrong. Something exciting might happen that I don't even plan on. And you just have to kind of go with the flow and see what happens. And I want to bring that to you as well, and I want to share my thoughts along the way. So that's why you'll see a second video come out a day or two. Sorry, I got an a-hole on my bumper here. I'm trying to get in the right lane to let him through. And as I'm doing that, he's trying to get right behind my bumper in the right lane. Go ahead, guy. <laughs> Fun. You know, that's the other. You got to be really careful driving when you're doing these chases. You got to be careful driving anytime, but got a lot of people he could uh, actually I could see these smoke probably can't pick it up on this camera but I could see it ahead to my left as it heads towards Hamburg and Port Clinton um, so I was starting to say yeah that's why you'll see about a day or two later because it does take more time to edit after I do my individual train videos you'll see this vlog style video that I call the chase and for every day that I go out and chase 2102, that will be the format. I'll do the same thing each time. But then there's also a bigger plan for the year. Um, I have four more times to rail fan this after today. Uh, these tracks on the left, by the way, are not the ones that it passes through. These are the tracks that go to the museum. Um, so I'll be rail fanning it four more times before I ride it in October. And my goal is, if possible, to do every single rail fanning from a different location. Or even if I repeat locations, hopefully I'm going to be doing it. Um, if I catch it going outbound one time, I'll catch it inbound the other time so we'll get a different view. And at the end of the year, I want to put together my entire collection of videos which will be clips of me riding the train interspersed with clips of it uh, going through the different crossings and areas. And uh, if I pull it off right, it'll actually look like I have a professional film crew where it's just me, one amateur with a couple of cheap cameras. But uh, it's all about having fun. Um, I don't know if you saw the couple of cop cars lying in the road here. There's, this is your normal traffic here. This is what you normally contend with out in the country. Add in today a couple thousand rail fans. But you do see a heavy police presence um, during these. Now, you're going to see a lot of cops out because it's 4th of July weekend. But I have to imagine that they're all kind of alerted that they're going to have high traffic through their, uh, their towns. And I haven't had any problems with them. I mean, you know... Just like everything, if you follow the rules and don't do anything stupid, you're going to be fine. Uh, but they are, I believe, keeping a closer tabs on things. And, and hey, that's a good thing. You know, I don't have a problem with that. Alright guys, that's enough of me rambling. You want to see the next location, right? Let's go to Molino. Alright, and this is where things always get interesting, guys, because I thought I was behind it. But that, we're on Route 61 North. This is the bridge crossing the uh, Schuylkill River and the railroad tracks just south of the Port Clinton headquarters and train station where it will be making a stop. And I still see people out there on the bridge. I was starting to worry that I was uh, falling behind here, but um, either a whole bunch of them are late to the party or it hasn't passed through there yet, which is actually a little surprising. Unfortunately, on a cloudy day like today, sometimes it can be hard to pick up the smoke, particularly as it winds through these gorges here. You would think you'd be able to see it, but a lot of times you can't. Cars turning off left to the caboose there. They're going to Port Clinton. 
I have not. In fact, there's still a crowd at the crossing by Port Clinton. I have not tried to catch it there because I'm sure, um, you know, you saw my recent tour there. Parking was rough on a normal day. Um, from what I can tell, the uh, the railroad police do not let you park at these stations on the days of the rides um, unless you have a ticket. And, and that's only true for these sold out steam engine rides. It's obviously not true for something like the RDCs because you saw I went there last weekend to Reading. But alright, I can kind of calm down a little bit now because um, I'm obviously ahead of it. It has to make a stop in Port Clinton to pick up passengers. That gives me time to go right up the road here to Molino to hopefully pick out the spot that I've been wanting to film at for a while. So, fingers crossed that it goes well, guys. Let's go. guys I didn't have to wait along too long for Molino but it uh, looks like the shot that I wanted I got hopefully it came out good it's hard to tell on these little screens I'm filming uh, with the DJI pocket which is my favorite because it gives you that smooth pan and then I'm also doing fixed angle shots with the DJI action Osmo action same company I think all right, well, there's a traffic jam now heading probably to New Ringgold. Maybe not New Ringgold. You probably uh, well, you probably could catch it. I don't know. We're going to pass through New Ringgold. We'll see what's going on. Wasn't planning to stop, but I have to pass through there to get to Jim Thorpe, so we'll see. This is another spot I've been wanting to film from. This is Miller's Crossing Road really scenic uh, spot where you can, uh, if you stand on the road, you can catch uh, it passing behind like a reddish barn, garage kind of building. This over here, right here, this spot right here, that's where me and Nick pulled over on the last chase, just spur of the moment. I had happened to glimpse it. There's a, another road up ahead, and we heard it as we were driving, and I happened to look to my left, which is now to my right because I'm going the other way. I happened to look to my left down the road and literally was looking straight at the side of the boiler as 2102 passed by and we just made a very sudden decision to uh, pull over and film and um, I pretty much just got in the truck in the park and gotten my shot picked and there it was. <laughs> so you have to expect the unexpected. Now I'm heading towards New Ringgold. Obviously it's ahead of me now. And it's kind of a straight shot. Um, 
it, it pretty much parallels the train parallels. Uh, I'm on route uh, 443 here, slash 895. It's actually, I think this is just 895. I forget where the roads combine and split. But I'm going through like some tree farms, and then on the other side of the tree farms to my right is the railroad tracks. And there's a crossing at New Ringgold. I don't plan to stop at New Ringgold because there probably just isn't going to be time to stop and set up. See all these cars coming out of this road here? That's where I glimpsed it last time. I happened to look down that road and I saw it go through the crossing. So that kind of means we're kind of catching it. You know it would be really cool? This is starting to drive me nuts as I drive. If I had to actually stop at the crossing to watch it go through because then I can get a bonus shot on the drive cam and not have to get out of my truck. However, you know it would really suck going through the crossing and hearing the gates come down behind you, that would really totally, ugh. That would not be fun. Now I'm torn. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm going to stop in New Ringgold. Um, it's also possible that it gets through New Ringgold before I do. I don't know, guys. What do you think? I might have to just make that last second decision and take my chances. Maybe I should get the camera out while I drive. Apologies for the wind noise, guys, as I approach New Ringgold here. I have no idea if I'm ahead of this or behind it. Uh, I am in a line of traffic, which you would not normally have coming into New Ringgold. I don't know if we're stopping or not. I'll assess the situation when I get to the crossing. Uh, if I don't catch it here, it's not really a big deal because I've caught it here before and I actually wasn't planning on catching it here today, but it only occurred to me as I was driving that, you know, I have to pass through here to get to Jim Thorpe, so yeah, we'll just see what's going on. And there's our answer, guys. Alright, check this out, guys. Hopefully the drive cam's picking it up, but I've also got the pocket. There's a bonus catch for you guys. I had not counted on that. Sure would have been nice to be a few cars further up the line, but uh, hey, I'll take what I could get, and this actually uh, fulfills a wish. I always been through this crossing many times, and every time I go through it, I'm like, oh, I wish I'd catch a train, and I never did. And hey, now I have. All right, what you guys are getting a look at now is the aftermath of a steam engine going through a town that there's uh, probably more train chasers in right now than there are actual residents. And we're not going to follow the crowd. And that's because the crowd's going to Tamaqua. Uh, I've learned from previous chases there is literally no way I'm going to catch it uh, from here. I mean, yeah, I might catch a glimpse from the roadside. Um, and that's actually one of my plans on the way back. Not that that's a bad thing. But what I'm doing is I'm taking a different way to Jim Thorpe. Um, I'm not going to pass through town. I'm going to take the back roads into Lehigh Gorge State Park. And then I'm going to bike the two miles into town. And let's see, it's about 10.15 in the morning. That gives me about an hour and a half uh, until 2102 pulls into Jim Thorpe. Um, probably about a 30, 40 minute ride by car. We'll call it 45 because I am going to have to make a pit stop. 
and then I'm not the world's fastest biker. That's for me to bike two miles is about another 15 minutes, so we're already at an hour. Uh, factor in probably another five or ten for me. Uh, uh, shuffling around all my uh, equipment and gear and getting the bike off the rack and all that. Um, you know, quick calculation is I think I should get into Jim Thorpe about, say, 15 minutes ahead of the train. Um, but the bike path also parallels the train, so if I happen to be running a little bit behind, uh, the worst case scenario is I pull my bike over and I film. I mean, not bad. Guys, we've already caught this train three times today. And it's, it's only about an hour and 20 minutes since it left the station in Reading. We got a long day ahead of us. And, um, you know, no matter what happens from here, it's already been a success. So let's keep building on it. I'll see you guys in Jim Thorpe.